Um, do you know what? Let me tell you something, yeah? I was recently doing, reading some like uh, feminist books. <laughs> and there's some really big ones, like, you know, this, um, uh, Simone de Beauvoir wrote a book called The Second Sex, a massive book. And, um, and she's an existentialist. So she goes into detail and she offers like philosophical um, discussions and stuff like that. On. Now, why am I bringing this up? Because nowadays, I think, uh, the feminist movement is quite a powerful movement, especially after the 1960s, yeah? Um, and um, there have been many books that have come out from the 1960s and all those kind of things uh, that have shaped, I would say, the legal, the social, and the economic environment in an incredible way, yeah? One of the byproducts of the feminist movement is questioning of certain uh, cultural aspects of other traditions. So let's not forget that feminism was sprouted from like a Western context, really an American context, if you really think about it, yeah? So combining that with like equality and notions of equality, some people will ask, why is it the case that you know women have to wear headscarf? Why, why is it the case that women have to wear certain clothing? Uh, these kinds of things, and how is that? Why is that conducive? Isn't that kind of like an oppression or these kinds of things? Yeah. So my, I really thought about this, and I was thinking about it over and over again. Yeah? And I was thinking about it in a different way, and I'll tell you how I sort of thought about it. Yeah. Feminism, as a uh, as an ideology, it, it kind of one of the undercurrents of it, or one of the presumptions of it, one of the assumptions is that women are being oppressed, there's a patriarchal society, uh, these kinds of notions, yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's a patriarchal society, etc. If you look at the sociological statistics, yeah, on uh, the kinds of, what I would call, oppression that's going on from male to female, or how the patriarchy is being uh, exacerbated, or strengthened, yeah? You could, you, you could sort of tear it in different kinds of strands. You can say there's an economic, there's an economic layer, there is a political layer, there's a domestic layer, there's a social layer. One thing that's often overlooked, not always, but it's often overlooked, is sexual objectification and commodification, yeah? Uh, really and truly, if you look at the contents of most male magazines, you'll find that the majority of the information that is presented in those magazines are, is basically the images of women and stuff like that. Im women are being used, commodified, objectified, uh, to promote products, to do this, to do that. And this, in essence, I thought to myself, really, this does nothing but strengthen the patriarchy. Think about it, yeah? from a feministic perspective. I put myself into the feminist shoes for a second. Yeah? I said, this does nothing but strengthen the patriarchy. That feminists, ironically, I'll tell you why it's an irony, want to dispel, yeah? So you think about prescriptions, like what would remedy the situation? If you know that you can't trust men, basically, because men are by nature going to want to objectify women, commodify them, they've always done that, you know, a full time, it's historical. If you know you can't trust them, and you know that men will definitely use female adornment to, you know, to uh, enhance their economic experience or their domestic experience or political experience. Doesn't it make sense to protest against, huh? I'm gonna sound like a real feminist now for a second. Doesn't it make sense to revolutionary, you know, it, we, can, we can become revolutionaries today and protest against male domination by covering up? Because if you think about it, that's a protest. You're saying no more. I don't wanna be looked at in that way. It really is a protest. It really is a stand against patriarchy, exploitation, oppression, commodification, objectification. I believe the hijab is the absolute, absolute most appropriate prescription for a feminist. But why is it that you'll find that feminists, unfortunately, not all of them, I'm not gonna generalize, tend to criticize it. Okay, fine, there are people that are forced to put it on. There are people that are, okay, fine. However, think of it from my angle here, yeah? If the patriarchy is being exacerbated as a result, huh, 
as a result of male commodification, objectification. You know the pornography industry, yes? I'm going to go into a little bit of a taboo topic here. The pornography industry is a trillion dollar industry. And if you look at what these uh, social scientists say in regards to it, the majority of it depicts women in a subservient, subordinated role on her knees, on groveling, things like that. She is the literally a slave to the man, right? Which is why, and this is very, very taboo, and I'm sorry if this sounds explicit. Even heterosexual women, according to BuzzFeed, they did a, a what do you call it, a, a data statistic on this using Google Analytics. A according to BuzzFeed and others, now the majority of even heterosexual women are watching homosexual pornography. Why? Because they want to keep away from this image of a man, you know, destroying and, you know, putting down the woman and using her. So doesn't it make sense to just completely take away, censor this thing? If women are being, and by the way, there are, there are actually, and this sounds completely, oh, why, censor? Oh, you sound like the Soviet Union. You sound, okay, wait, hold on. Can't, <laughs> no, seriously, think about this for a second, yeah? The uh, United States of America in Congress, they actually ran a report which concluded that uh, pornography increases domestic violence. And this was, I think, 1998. It was sometimes they run reports. I can't remember the name of the report. But they ran their report and it said it increases domestic violence and rape. Why? Because it's, it's, that, uh, it's normalizing the process of, it's giving a male, uh, the, pers the male is giving that person sort of like, I need this thing, or a feeling of entitlement. Right? Because it's so normalized now, I ought to do what this man is doing. So it can actually increase domestic violence, rape, and all these kinds of things, according to the study. Now, having said that, I personally believe, if you really think about it, the feminism or the feminist movement now has to take a new stance, a new revolutionary Islamic stance. You have to adopt from the Islamic position. Think about it for a second. I know it sounds ridiculous. Maybe just... It might not mesh in your mind because it just sounds a bit weird. But think about it. If you cover your body, a man cannot look at you. You're stopping him. You're privatizing your adornment. You're not giving him that entitlement. You're stopping patriarchy and exploitation and domestic violence, or you're going to reduce that statistic and rape, according to those studies. So, I mean, if the sociological statistics are quite profound in this situation, and they're on our side. The hijab, and by the way, you know, the man is not the same as the woman. It's absolutely patently clear. Men are not objectified in the same way as women are objectified. They're just not. And that re for that reason, the hijab is, is, is exaggerated, you could say, comparative to the man for the woman. It makes perfect sense, because they need more, they need more, Repelling power. The hijab is a power. It's actually it's a saying no to people, taking advantage of others. And therefore, I actually don't see the problem with uh, you know, this issue. I think s some non-Muslims see it as weakness for Muslim women. I think this is incredible strength for Muslim women. Absolutely incredible. They don't need to, s they don't need to go out there and succumb to societal expectations and, and become an object of male... Uh, you know, imagination. And believe me, if that woman who's walking in the streets, and let's say she's uncovered in a certain way, if she knew what that man was thinking, she'd think to herself, this man, how dare he think such a thing, you know? I mean, I wouldn't even let him do what he thinks he doesn't want to do with me, if that makes sense. <laughs> Anyways, I hope that answers uh, the question a little bit. Well, you were talking about clothes, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <Just that. laughs>